All right, just uh, looking back at the game for Saturday, is there anything else that stood out to you that you hadn't noticed right away? I don't know. Um, I thought it would be, you know, especially the first half defensively, we played even better than I thought. You know, our, our third down defense was you know, really good in, in those things. So, um, probably nothing at that. You know, it's kind of what I was hoping to see, kind of what we thought a little bit on. I think they had a seven, seven play drive and maybe, you know, about a handful of gadgets to kind of get themselves going. So I, I thought that was good. I still thought our special teams was was solid other than the extra point and the missed field goal, which I think will get corrected quickly. And, uh, and then we saw a few defensive guys go down at the end of the game, Aiden, Jeremy, a couple others. Was, was any up to offer any of those guys? Um, neither practice today. I, that's about the best I can give you right now. Um, so, hoping for, for better news as we progress through the week. And so, we'll go back to Friday, and there's the announcement of the $15 million gift for the Gateway District. I just wondered when you saw that. What did you think about uh, that? Process? Where'd you get the money? <laughs> <laughs> it's anonymous, I can't say. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, um, um, it, it, um, Colin Sexton let me know, um, you know, that it, that it was coming and it was something that, you know, again, very appreciative of, of the gift and what it's what it's going to do for this project and, and, and help this program for the long term and uh, appreciate the the donor and uh, yeah and you know I was I don't know how did I do that. <laughs> yeah, no. Okay, okay. Do. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. Are you are you constantly like getting updates on that project still or um I don't know, constantly. Yeah, I mean for now I've always uh, been a part of some of the some of the meetings, um, some meetings with donors. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm I feel very comfortable with what I've been um, informed and updated here. I'm curious six weeks into the season, what has surprised you most about this team? Hmm. Surprise me the most. I like the way you know. Our, I think our defense is is playing at a level that I'm. Um, I don't know if we'll be surprised, but um, to a level that I'm that I'm pleased with and and thought and, and some of the depth that I was anticipating that could come has started to come, especially at the second level at our linebacker position. And the rotation of those defensive linemen has uh, taken the step that we thought. Um, I can't really say surprised Bill yet. I, I think that's under that's under selling those guys. You mentioned the depth part. It seems like every week there are different guys popping mm -hmm. up producing. How pleased have you been with that? That there are different guys and it's not consistently just the same three, four people every week. Right, and and. You know, Michael, that's a part where you get and you look at the rep counts and you look at the length of a season and. We haven't had an open week yet, and you, and you worry about that. So we're starting to get a little bit more. It's good to see Taiwan, uh, you know, get get in the flow a little bit better. And then Jason Gilling didn't, didn't have a ton of snaps, but he, he made some great effort plays, and he's feeling more comfortable in his role. And that starts giving you, you know, you know, you know we talked about Cornell before. So now we've got six that we can rotate in you know, a little bit better. And, and of course, what well, we've been rotating in the secondary, so and then the guys up front were playing a lot of guys, so um, that, that's really going to help that unit. Um, you know, offensively, we're playing three guards, and then everything else is pretty stagnant. Play three tight ends, play a ton of receivers. You know, Dylan McDuffie, I don't even know if he had a, a scrimmage snap at Texas, and you know, he gets like 13 carries, so that uh, that's good. I think we had a big day in the backfield. But really, you know, neither one of the, you know, Daniel or Devin really had a, you know, it wasn't a 20 plus carry game. You mentioned the guards. Have you done this before? Rotating three guys yeah. for, for two spots? Yeah. And how, how pleased have you been with the very, success? You know, I, I think RJ had one of his better games, maybe his best game. He's very physical. Um, Kobe's an extremely physical player, and, and Michael Ford was our, you know, our player of the week in the offensive line for just his steady play again. And um, you know, you know, Davidsky didn't practice every day, and so he has to take some center reps as well. But 
yeah, we, we've been able to do that before rotating some, and I really like it because it continues to keep guys working hard in practice, but also um, you can take a, you know, a little bit of wear off the guys. And so it's got a lot of benefits, and, you know, and if, you know, we're not quite there yet with our younger tackles, and Logan Brown's been out, so it hasn't quite played out that way at that position, but it'd be nice if you can get to seven or eight and, and, and make it that, that you have you know, mixing and matching parts. Six hundred. How has Austin Booker looked up to the expectations you have for him? Um, yeah, you know, I don't know if I put it like I have these expectations, like whether it be statistically. I, I, I never really kind of gone that way. Um, probably if there's, I think he's probably playing a little bit higher level than at times than what I thought. He still has things to get better at and consistent and, and responsibility, you know, you know, there'll be some plays, of course, he'll show up, but then there's some plays, you know, it, and he knows that, and, and we got to keep him in a good spot, but also give him some freedom to go make some plays, but um, he's talented, and, and he can, you know, and I, I think he's not even near the ceiling yet of what he can completely be if he keeps he keeps after it. And I know he gets more comfortable every week. It's, he's playing the most football he has since high school and and, and that's great to see uh, in many ways for, for him and for us. And then is Jalen practicing and what are your thoughts no, on Jalen not practice today. It's and I haven't gotten an update yet, so I was reading something last week. I saw somebody say that in Central Florida, they have some guys that they got from the floor that just aren't contributing. And I started looking at what you guys have done. You guys have hit on a lot of guys in the floor. Just talk about the evaluation process and what you guys go through to do that. Well, it happens fast, and it's going to get faster. Uh, um, yeah, and I want to, you know, we, we haven't hit every time. So, you know, we need to be honest there. And But uh, for the most part, there's, Evaluation. There's conversations. There's there's other things that we do that um, that gives us a, a little idea on the person. Um, and then, of course, through our conversations, are they going to fit? You know, we you know we've had young men have visits and they come here. And we're like, just don't think that one's going to fit. It, it, and there's enough obstacles. And usually, of course, when somebody is in the portal, they're seeking opportunity and playing time. But have to understand that it's it's gonna it's gonna be competitive here now as well, and uh, I think at some of our misses a year ago that people thought they could pick Kansas because it would be easier to get on the field, and uh, I think our guys now understand and we hopefully continue. And sometimes it's you know there are a lot of things that can happen that cause you to be deficient in a in a position. So, but. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with, with where we're at right now and, and uh, I'm equally um, happy with our retention. And, and hopefully, you know, we can continue to build the program maybe <laughs> the old-fashioned way where you get to redshirt some guys and develop them and keep them within the culture and build it. And hopefully they, they, they have a chance to contribute three-plus years. Travis obviously sent out the letter about fan support mm -hmm. two weeks ago. What did you think of the, the crowd on Saturday? No, it was a very good crowd. You know, I, you, you could, you know, at least from, I, you know, I don't really look behind me at all, but, I, you know, you could see a couple pockets there up in the corners, but I thought it was good. I mean, people are surprised when they come to our games about uh, the, the noise level, um, the, way, the way the stadium sits, the way, the way our student section and fans get into it. They, you, know, you know, we need them, man. We need them because it does create a home field advantage. And, and um, but... Um, all in all, I got a lot more to worry about than, than that. Okay, there's other there's other things here. Hopefully, um, you know, I, I know there weren't as many there at halftime when we came out. Um, you know, I think that's the thing of, uh, you, know, you know, hopefully maybe because they felt the game was in control. I never did, um, but um, we can sustain that. But no, I think we've had solid crowds and, and uh, you know, again, if. What are we evaluating against? Uh, last year's at a certain point of the season, or are we going to talk about the I mean, first game here against South Dakota? I mean, so we've come a long way, and, and hopefully we make this a, a thing where it's a tough ticket to get your hands on.
something you mentioned after the BYU game was the importance of the crowd for recruiting purposes. Can mm-hmm. you explain how important it is? For yeah, what you guys want well, to again, the environment. It's all about environment. People, uh, young men are impressionable. Uh, you know, sometimes you know television can do a great job of, of, of showing that. Sometimes they can do a great job of hiding that when it's not there. I mean, when you coach in the MAC on a weeknight, you know you you know what a what a <laughs> what sparse crowds look like, and and um, let alone Division Three. So um, you, you take that point, but again, everything kind of plays in, plays a part these days for for you know, eight, sixteen to eighteen year olds. It's, it can be facilities, it can be crowd, it can be the environment as a whole. It's um, you know. Sometimes it's uniforms and other things. There's there's a lot of things, but you try to check enough boxes, but keep what's really most important, most important. Oklahoma State, what kind of stands out about them to you? Yeah, you know, I, I think they played their best game, I think, of the year Friday night uh, against the defending conference champions. And, and, and really, uh, you know, I think they've kind of hit their a little more side. They've been rotating quarterbacks. I think they've settled now. Um, Size and experience up front shows itself again. A lot of career starts, a lot of a lot of good solid football players that you know they haven't probably had the the start of the season that they desired. But again, I, like I said, I, I think they get two consecutive home games. You know, it's a tough place to go play, and uh, and for us, it's a you know it's a game we bust to. And there's some things we talked about today with our team that we've got to. Make sure we're in the right mindset and approach it in the right way that uh, we put ourselves in a position to, to play our best football. Yeah, how do you feel like? How do you feel like you guys have played on the road, kind of going back to the middle of last season? I didn't think all about last season. Uh, you know, again, there's different dynamics. Just like, you know, you know, the Texas game and, and those that kind of happen. I, I think we're getting better as a road team. I think we try to build good routines. I think our players. Uh, understand and respect it. We, we give them input on different things to try to change. Um, trying to remember all our away games last year at that, that second half of the season. We didn't play well the second half as well as we'd like. So it, it could be a, something that could be, you know, you know, analyzed and criticized probably. So continue to look at it. Um, so we'll you know, I'm, I'm probably more focused on them right now than thinking back to all those games last year. I apologize. Yeah, I mean, just looking at Alan Bowman, who's kind of become the a starter for LSU the last two games, what has kind of stood out is tape-wise? Say, I'm sorry? Uh, what's kind of stood out tape-wise about for, Alan Bowman? Um, yeah, size, experience. Yeah, I think he's got a better feel for what they're doing. He's got a good arm. Uh, you know, they use, you know, he's run some. Uh, again, I, I think it's just being more comfortable and consistent with what, what they're doing. I can't, I don't want to speak for Coach Gundy or any of his people, but to me, so, to me, I, I kind of look at when we first got here and you had three quarterbacks or so that are all pretty close and you're trying to give everybody a chance and one guy looks good, one, and you're, it's, it's not easy and that's not a, you know, that you're, you want to be fair, you give everybody the evaluation, nobody's really taken the job. I wonder if that's what happened there. I don't know. And then all of a sudden something maybe was a tipping point. So I, I know what we went through the first year, you know, when we had, you know, Miles, Jalen, and, and Jason, and um, that was some of the things. It was nobody really, they all showed flashes, but nobody really stood out. So you keep keep going through it, and sometimes, it takes a little longer. Yeah, and like obviously you guys have beat close to last year. Um, historically, I guess Miss Turbo and Stillwater. Is that something you kind of point out to the team? And say, yeah, we, you know, we did a little bit. I, I did to our leadership group a little bit, and uh, you know, I, you know, we'll obviously want to want to change that. Uh, yeah, we, you know, that was uh, you know, pretty disappointing performance down there two years ago. I know that, but it's two years ago, and some of the guys that are still here have definitely grown and matured since then. And last year, I thought we played pretty well here. So um, take them for what they're worth, And uh, but we've got to find a way to go down to a tough place, like I said, and uh, find a way to win a game. Yeah, and I mean, you guys have one of the best rushing attacks in the nation. How's that going to open up the field? 
field where a guy like Jason Dean just getting acclimated and get more comfortable? Yeah, I think, I mean, you know, our receivers, again, you know, everybody wants to, you know, be contributors and have catches and targets, and, and, and that can be disappointing. But as I think I said after the game a little bit, we, we said that this was probably going to have to be the, the game plan. And our guys handled it. I still thought, you know, Lawrence came up with, with, with a couple big plays, one on reverse. Luke comes in, you know, Luke makes a couple catches, but we didn't throw it a ton. We didn't have to. But, it, you know, the, the nice thing, about, and it's always been that way with, with our offensive philosophy is we're going to do what it takes to be able to win games, but have it that we're balanced enough to do so. And, um, and sometimes it's, you know, we could be sitting in here, you know, Next week, talking about you know 50, 50 attempts, it, you know it can happen. So, but again, the rushing attack is is a place if you want to try to win games, you got better be able to run the football when you need to. And, and um, it was a good day for us Saturday. Thanks. On on Gilliam and those effort plays you mentioned, uh, two things. I wonder. Do those things stand out to his teammates? Do you, do you think he's getting? Yeah, they do. I mean, they. Uh, Jason's one of the most. Everybody know. You know, he had, he had a bad injury in spring ball, missed last season. Um, you know, he's a great young man. It's been there, and like I say, he's well liked and well respected, and and not just like respected. And and um, Coach Borland showed it to the whole defense. Showed, showed a clip of practice of him making an effort play, and how he practiced. On the same blitz that he came, and he and he showed him making the play on the backside, chasing a guy down. Um, Jason's one of the first five guys in this building every day. I go down to the lobby before on the day of a game. Jason's already down. Um, he is a, a guy you can count on. We've made him to switch from safety to outside backer. He continues to feel more comfortable. He plays a ton of special teams, and. Uh, you know, you want somebody like that and all his habits and what he does to be, uh, you know, contagious throughout the locker room. Anything else, Coach? All right. Thanks, Thanks guys. So Have a great Thank week. Thank you.